welcome to Access, the show that lights PS3's biggest fireworks and explodes them into sparkling video brilliance. Lighting up this week's episode, we rifle through the latest news in our PlayStation briefing, wade through a sea of wigs and replica swords at the London Comic Con, and rub shoulders with the music industry at the VidZone relaunch party. But first, it's time for octopus guns and wobbly purple rubber with our Game of the Week, Saints Row the Third. An extremely virtuous person. That's what the all-knowing dictionary told us when we typed Saint into the internet. Obviously, the all-knowing dictionary hasn't played Saints Row the Third. How do we know? Well, firstly, dictionaries don't have thumbs, and secondly, being a saint in THQ's open world of dancing cat crazy is less about endless patience and halos and more about parachuting into penthouse parties, clonking people in the no-nos and playing with big, bulging purple cars. But that's not even the tip of the game's heartwarmingly gratuitous iceberg. And if you don't believe us, here's Volition's Greg Donovan and Scott Phillips to tell you all about their favourite Saints Row pastimes. On one side, you've got the Apocryphus, which are these giant uh, boxing glove sort of looking things. Uh, anyone you punch with them just turns into goo. They just, you know, Dr. Manhattan style, they just poof, turn into a big pile of blood. Uh, and then on the other side, you've got uh, Kilbane's mask, which if you choose that, you can put that on and then walk around the city and anyone you taunt immediately lights on fire. Creating this enormous She-Hulk with giant breasts running around the city naked, messing with pedestrians, jumping out of a VTOL while I'm flying, and then simultaneously um, activating a base jumping as I parachute into it for a final level of respect. That type of like craziness, it's like I cannot believe this is happening. It happens all the time in the game, and that's what I am most proud about and most excited about for Saints Row the Third. Giving Saints Row the Third a lazy lick of the it's GTA but stupider brush doesn't do justice to the throbbing wealth of content hidden away under that slapstick surface. Penetrate deeper and you'll be able to bust rival gang operations as you climb the city's power rungs. And with the mega exploding mollusk launcher on your side, grinding your anti-homies into a soup of wet entrails is satisfying like popping a huge pus-filled human wart. Duty cleaner to the runway, please. We could go on forever about the hilarious distractions, but that's not to say the core narrative suffers a jot. The missions are action-packed like Jean-Claude Van Damme squeezed into a cereal box, the set pieces are brilliantly ludicrous, and making people flap about like stranded salmons as you pepper them with bullets, floppy bats and octopi feels just as good as that sounds. Saints Row the Third arrives on PS3 on November the 18th and it comes as highly recommended as painting your body green and showing off your prized vegetables to the unsuspecting public. <laughs> Obviously we don't really recommend that. We do. Time now for a scorching blast of news to warm your chilly winter fingers. It's our PlayStation briefing. We start big with the announcement that a Mass Effect 3 demo and multiplayer beta will be hitting the PlayStation Store in January, which of course also means the return of Commander Shepard, just in case you'd forgotten in all the end of 2011 blockbuster madness. Shifting focus from space to balls, we recently dropped in on EA's Winter Showcase and had ourselves a dabble on FIFA Street, which is less about scoring goals than graffitied walls and tying defenders' knees in knots. We sat down with EA Sports' Sid Misra and asked him what his very best real-life footy skill was. My best real-life football move. It's more of the push them out of the way, uh, but I'm not a big guy, as you can see, so uh, it doesn't always work either. Are you sure you're not Lee Catamole in disguise? Coming our way later this month is Middle-earth Beard'em Up, the Lord of the Rings War in the North. The game's story runs parallel to the events of the movies and mostly involves cleaving goblins limb from limb like a pointy-eared butcher. We asked producer Ruth Tomandel about her favourite way of smiting those nasty orcs. Once, once you do a critical hit and you're in hero mode, uh, if, you do an, if you're able to do another critical hit, often you'll decapitate whichever orc you're fighting and it's like the best feeling in the world. That was your PlayStation Briefing. We'll hit you with more news next week. Prepare to splurge your virtual monies, it's time for your PlayStation Store Roundup. 
Kicking off a trio of high-profile downloadables this week is Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands, which sees the royal monkey man going back to what he does best, laughing in physics stupid face as he clambers up pillars and fighting nasty demon types with a sword made of sponge. Forgotten Sands wedges itself between Sands of Time and the Two Thrones in the Prince's chronology and is available on the store today. When Earth's crust does finally crumble like a month-old cream cracker, we do hope it's as much fun as Motorstorm Apocalypse, available for download right now. Seeking shelter is for babies. What you really want to be doing is ploughing through the carnage in a souped-up off-road vehicle. But don't the end days look pretty? Delivering the knockout punch on the store this week is EA's face-flattening Fight Night Champion, with the full game making its way to the virtual shelves today. The roster of fighters is impressive, but the best bit is, of course, thonking men in the eyes with a bulldozing right hook. Eat it. Finishing off our store roundup and dropping into the dark DLC streets is the Nightwing DLC pack for Batman Arkham City, which lets you take control of Batman's former sidekick as he boffs thugs around the head with electrified sticks in the game's challenge maps. The add-on pack comes with two maps of its own, plus this ace Nightwing skin from the animated series. That's all for now. We'll have more from the store next week. Well done, intrepid viewer. You've found our bonus level, which this week comes direct from London Town as we descend upon the VidZone relaunch party. The free-to-download music video service has recently undergone a snazzy redesign and come out the other side with a slick new interface and social networking capabilities. Britney fans, hold fire on the share button, please. We stuck our trusty camera of truth into the faces of VidZone's John Pike and Adrian Workman to find out more. Essentially what we've done is we've, we've divided the service very cleanly and neatly into zones now. So if you went into the dance zone, you'd find all the dance artists, but you'd also find all the dance TV shows. If you're not sure what you want to watch, you can go to your favourite artist and watch videos by similar artists there. There's also the My Zone functionality, which allows users to save their playlists uh, to their own personal My Zone. The new VidZone is available to download right now, and you can head to the official website at vidzone.com for more info. This week, Access All Areas rocks up at the Excel Centre in London for the MCM Expo or Comic Con as it's otherwise known. A humongous exhibition stuffed full of plush gaming goodies and lots of lovely people dressed up as their favourite characters. Our personal highlights included this out of sync Power Ranger. You're not morphing into anything like that, mate. Some poor young lady trussed up in a sweltering Tauren costume. And this sneaky little fellow hiding in a cardboard box. Y yeah, we, we can see you. It wasn't all about the homemade wigs and wallet-sucking memorabilia, however, there were plenty of games on display too, like Batman Arkham City, Assassin's Creed Revelations and Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And who better to pass judgement on the games than the stars themselves? First up, Altair seems rather chuffed to be back for Assassin's Creed Revelations. That's the whole reason this got brought out in that sense, so yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled to have him back and everything. And we asked strawberry-haired warrior Lightning what she was most looking forward to in upcoming sequel Final Fantasy XIII too. The fact that changing the linear the, the linearity about it, so obviously it's not a straight line like 13 was, but it's it's obviously you've got more explanations, so you've got like missions you can do besides the side quest, which I'm definitely looking forward to that. However, the stars of the show weren't the games, but the cosplayers themselves, who'd clearly invested plenty of time, effort and eBay surfing into their outfits. There was an excellent showing from the Kingdom Hearts Massive, as well as some top-notch Assassin's Creed fanciers, complete with neck-stabbing weaponry. We also had a chance to ask Street Fighter's Viper what she most enjoyed about Comic-Con. One of the really good things is that everyone you meet seems to be a really nice person. If you stop someone asking for a picture, they're like, yeah, sure, and they're really grateful for it, and that's always really nice. Um, it is good to sort of, like, you'll meet up with people and you'll play games with them, and you don't know them, but everyone's, like, really friendly to each other. So, yeah, I think it's because we were all the geeks at school who were never really the cool kids, and now we're the cool kids here, so we're all happy with that. Finally, we quite literally ran into this barrel-chested Bane, who showed off his balloon-sized biceps. Wow, you wouldn't be able to bite those even if you wanted to. An all-round amazing day then, and you can guarantee we'll be back for the next Comic-Con, complete with our very own pointy hat and papier-mâché sword. Before we go, here's a bit of sartorial trivia courtesy of the game that does everything Uncharted 3. 
If the young version of Drake seen in the flashback mission looks a bit familiar, it could be because he's wearing the same outfit as Proto Drake from the first game's 2006 E3 trailer, which is different from those featured in the game itself. So a lovely little nod for fans playing close attention and proof that boys will go years without changing their t-shirt if you let them get away with it.